Hey there everyone! Today I thought I would do a quick and easy little pan pastel skin tutorial. I was already doing this hair for a um, hashtag on Instagram and so I thought well I've got some skin to color in and I've had a few requests so this would be a good one. Now this isn't a full face <laughs> obviously she's looking away but this actually might be a really good one for those new to their pan pastel set and you want to kind of get a lay of the land without accidentally ruining your picture. So I will be using the skin tone set. It comes already in a palette. Um, I love these palettes so even when I buy these open stock I buy open stock palettes and put them in there so that you're not having to fidget with the <laughs> lids. But this one comes already ready to go with some skin tones and then I do have a colorless blender and then my spare colorless blender here so I have added those and then I plan to add another darker tone um, down the road and then I will also be using one of my soft tools I'm just using this little oval ish one and then I'm also using my soft tool here it kind of looks like a eyeshadow brush but it is not <laughs> and, and then I always recommend having a brush off to the side now don't use a brush that say you use for like you know crumbles or dust from colored pencils have a set of brushes that are just for pastel dust um, sure you can sit there and clean them but I, I prefer to do it that way Okay, so let's get started. I have not used these in so long that I want to make sure I am using the right color names, but first thing I'm going to do is take this one here, which is Burnt Sienna Shade. Oh, and we're going to start using our little dabber here. We're just going to start adding in her shadows. Now the cool thing about pan pastels is they're erasable. Uh, so if you mess up or you accidentally get some on the hair, just grab a kneaded eraser and you can just pluck that right out of there. They only are um, permanent once you fix them. So, and I use a Krylon workable fixative and it seems to hold them down pretty good. So that's what I use. I'm just going in with that Burnt Sienna to get my shadow areas, the contours of her cheeks. Pressing very lightly, by the way, um, these tools do break, or I should say fray rather easily <laughs> so just keep that in mind I know it looks really dark right now but whew, the colorless blender and then of course the other layers we add are actually going to dark or uh, lighten up this darker tone here so don't be like oh my gosh it's ruined now she has orange hair so I am doing just a Caucasian light skin tone um, but I do want to do some more ethnic skin tones as well with the pan pastels. I haven't used them enough and honestly they are such a game changer for skin, especially if the idea of layering pencils just, you know, gives you nightmares. <laughs> so I used to use these a lot more until I finally got over my fear. In fact, one of the first portraits I ever did was using pan pastels. And you can always use these as a base. Spray down your workable fixative and um, then kind of come in with your, <coughs> excuse me, come in with your pencil. But today we are keeping it simple and literally just sticking to the pan pastel. You 
will get a lot of dust. Like I said, don't worry. If you mess up, it will erase. <sighs> Now, yes, you can use like some cheap dollar store makeup brushes, but they just don't quite perform the same, in my opinion. I'm gonna throw that out there. Okay, next we're gonna grab Burnt Sienna Tint. That is this one right here. And I'm gonna use my um, flat oval. Just get a, get a little dab. A little bit goes a long way. These pans are gonna last me forever. I'm going to blend that in just lightly with my dark colors here. Up here. But yeah, with her orange hair, I just kind of figured she'd probably have a paler skin tone. <laughs> And I'm actually doing it for a hashtag, and I was like, I need to film a tutorial. <laughs> and this is actually probably a better place to start because you're working with less contours of the skin, so you can familiarize yourself more with how the pan pastels lay down on paper, and not so much worrying about like nose and cheekbones. I mean, I still have some of that, but you know what I mean? There's a little less to stress over here, and that could be a better thing. Make sure her arm is in there. So you'll notice I've left like a little white space right here. That's because I plan to leave a highlight. And again, if you just ever need more, just dab and apply. Now pan pastels can look splotchy if you're not careful, so always make sure you're looking at it from all angles. I'm getting everything. And I think I have a pan pastel tutorial on my channel doing the full face as well. I know I do, somewhere. So I'm going to leave a little highlight from her arm. And these layer up beautifully. It's like you can do light layers and just build them up and get more concentrated color. They do come with like a little sponge tool that's really good for like larger areas. See, I'm feathering this a little because I want to leave a shadow, or highlight, <laughs> not a shadow. Okay, now I'm going to take a tiny bit of the colorless blender and put it on the bottom of my oval here. And then I'm going to take some of our shadow color, kind of bring them together. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there and a little bit back here because she will have kind of a shadow where her arm is okay I'm gonna go back to my just regular old skin tone that we were using I'm gonna blending that out does it look like a hot mess right now? Yes. Again, you mess up, just erase. No harm, no foul, and it erases like a dream. But this is going to blend out once I add more layers. So I'm still going with my Burnt Sienna. And that's one thing you'll get to know about pan pastels, you burnt You'll have the color, the tint, and the shade. The tint is the lighter one, 
the color is just the plain old color and then the shade is the darker version of it. You do not actually have to buy the tint and the shade. You could just buy the base color and then get the white and the black and lighten them yourself. Um, but you guys know me. I'm not ashamed of convenience. <laughs> so I like to just blow mine off. But you can use your brush. Okay. Now, I am going to grab my colorless blender. This is white, which you can put in the highlight areas if you want. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to put my colorless blender out and see first because the colorless blender does actually lighten up things quite a bit. And I'll show you right now. But I'm using that also to go over my highlight areas and get it just a little softer. But see how the colorless blender is already lightening? So don't automatically reach for your white when things are looking dark because you're going to use that colorless blender to buff things out. And this thing, this colorless blender, which I'm still using by the way, each time I go to dip, I'm just grabbing, let me turn it this way so you can see. Um, I'm just grabbing more colorless blender, but see how it's already lightening everything up? That's why I say don't freak out when you put down your shade color and you're like, ah! And then yeah, I I just use the Krylon workable fixative, fixative, tiff. <laughs> That's how they they have it written, um, and it holds the pan pastels really well. You can use a final fixative. Um, I use Grumbacher. I'm sure I butchered that, but I use their final fixative. But I am not done with this because I plan to do a background. Maybe I don't know. You guys know me in backgrounds plan on them but don't always go through with it so um but yeah if you were like completely done then I recommend the Grumbacher I'll try to link to it below um but Blick has it it's a really good one for pastels I've noticed um and it's an artist grade so no yellowing or anything over time which is good if you plan to do any commission work with pan pastels and you need a fixative and it's uh, great in adult coloring books as well. I have a Krylon final fixative that I do not use. I'll use their workable, but their final, I will not. Okay, so we're just still blending all that out. And see, like, I got a little bit out of the lines there. I just pick it up with my finger. No harm, no foul. Now I want this darker over here because this is the contour of her cheek, but also she's got her head turned and she's got this monster thing of hair. So obviously we're going to have some more shadows there. Even though it's erasable, I always do my best to not get on <laughs> like spots, especially because my pencil is also erasable. So got to avoid that. I'm just adding a little more colorless blender here to her highlight areas. I'm going to add a little bit up here as well. Give her a teensy bit of a highlight. Blend that out. Okay. Now I'm very gently going to take one of my pastel brushes. Just gently brush. any excess gently because this stuff moves very easily I can go in and wipe it up now I want to add a teensy bit of pink so I'm going to still use my same one and now I'm going to grab my red iron oxide tint which is this one here that is a light version of the red iron oxide I like to use this to add just a little bit of pink. One color I felt was missing in this skin tone set, so they give you a nice yellowish shade, but they don't give you a purple, and that's one that I want to add to it. Um, 
I feel it needs like a purple. But like I said, I love that it comes in this palette. Uh, I have added in the white and I think it came with a colorless blender. Can't recall. But I have two colorless blenders sitting in here right now. And that is just because I needed somewhere to stuff it because I have several. All right, getting a little bit more of my blush color in here. All right, let's see how she looking. I think we're looking good, we're looking good. I'm feeling like I need to grab more of the base skin tone color just in here. And now I'm going to grab a little colorless blender with it. You hear me like blowing on the camera. I'm just gonna erase right here where a little bit came off her chin. Again, you can use um, honestly any eraser will do. Cheap one, expensive one, kneadable one. Kneadable is best if it gets on the hair and you just want to press it on there. My open kneadable is somewhere. Um, but any eraser will do the job. In fact, even my Faber Castell one here. We'll get all these ones that came around. I mean, it erases like a dream. So over here, we're a little off. So I'm going to take my lighter skin tone and dab it just a tiny bit with the colorless blender as well. And buff that spot out a little more. Now this is a very basic one. Um, I, we, I wanted to do it kind of beginner friendly. If I wanted to go more in depth, we would do a lot more shading and a lot more undertones, breaking out some yellows and purples. Um, because like I said, it does include the yellow. I bought the purple separate, but it's in another set with my other purples right now. But that would be more advanced. And honestly, it looks pretty. I'm grabbing colorless blender now. It looks pretty even just like this. I don't need to correct a lot of color. Just lightly buffing that out. I'm going to take some colorless blender and buff this spot out as well. I just feel it's a little too heavy. Okay, now I do want to grab a tiny bit of white and just show you so like I've got a highlight right here, right? So I got a little bit of white on. I don't know if you can see how dramatic the white is, but the white really does lighten things. The colorless blender does too, but the white is quite opaque. So save your white only for when you're like, okay, the colorless blender isn't doing enough. So I'm going back to my uh, skin tone and the reason I'm not using the name is because I keep forgetting what it is and I hate how you have to turn them over I don't have my chart in front of me okay I'm gonna add a little bit of white up here just to lighten it a tiny bit because I don't want it super dark be very very ginger with that white I'm gonna add a little white here as well And then I'm going to grab my lighter skin tone color and just go on top of it. And then I'm going to get my colorless blender now. Kind of blend these out a little. That's better. I like the way the contour looks there. Oops, I was sloppy, but it'll erase. Okay, I'm going to grab some more colorless blender and just blend right through here where I added that white make it all nice and even oh I don't even know what to do for a background on this alright okay first thing I like to do is I just like to blow it off so pull it off to the side there now I'm gonna look for any spots 
need the aid of my eraser. Now, like I said, if you get it on the hair, pull out a kneadable and just dot or dab. Dab is the word, not dot. In this case, I have a few instances where I went outside of the lines. Okay. And then I'm going to take my uh, brush that I use for pastels lightly, lightly. Like you're barely touching the paper lightly here because this stuff will move until you fix it down. And I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so I want to make sure you all don't learn that. There we go. Super simple. Like I said, I wanted it. Let me lift this up for you guys. Um, and even her out. I wanted it to kind of be an easy, beginner friendly one where we were kind of just tackling the basics. I do have one on my channel um, with a Mariola Budek picture that is also beginner friendly where she's forward facing. And you know what? While I have you guys here, let's just put her eyelashes on so that she is technically done. Just so happened I have a Black Widow on my desk <laughs> in black. So what I like to do here is I just, with a very sharp point, similar to hair, just kind of throw those bad boys in there. Look at those luscious lashes. And so if I wanted to, I could go back in with pencil and kind of deep, you know, Spray this with workable fixative if you're going to go in with pencil. <laughs> Don't go with pencil first, otherwise you're going to scratch everything you just did right off. Because like I said, literally lifts right off. Um, but I would spray it with a workable fixative, wait at least 24 hours, and then you could go in and add some shading, darken up her contours, add some more pink for highlights if you wanted. Get a little, you can know, you fix her eye here since it kind of looks like she just cut it <laughs> off. <laughs> um, but for a beginner, this is just fine and dandy, and I actually like it. So I have to think of what I'm going to do with the background, but I'm going to spray it with my workable fixative and go from there. So yeah, I will leave links in the description below uh, to the skin tone palette because like I said, this comes with everything you need and it is awesome and I swear it comes with at least one colorless blender. And then I will link to the soft tools, but you do get a set of soft tools with this palette. Um, I believe you get a round and maybe an oval of this. However, you don't get this bad get this bad boy. Um, this you have to purchase separate, so I'll try to remember to link to that, as well as my fixative. Um, and as always, those are just affiliate links. They help my channel. I always appreciate it if you guys buy through those, but never buy something if you don't need it. <laughs> so I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and until next time, take care. Bye now.